not case of an uh, two year old kid who has come with an foreign body aspiration into the right bronchus sir mm. so to just to generalize foreign body aspiration occurs when an object or a substance non native to the la- laryngotracheal bronchial pathway is inhaled and embedded anywhere from the level of larynx down to the distal bronchus and beyond very good mm. so the uh, foreign bodies can be broadly classified into organic and inorganic organic being most commonest peanuts custard apple tamarind seeds popcorn and jelly beans inorganic being the beads buttons coins small toys or pins so the most commonest uh, the usually kids undergo this foreign body aspiration sir generally children at the age of 1 to 5 with a peak incidence occurring from 6 uh, months to 3 years and uh, due to some reasons boys are more prone for uh, rather than the girls for foreign body aspiration the risk factors for this foreign body aspiration is generally loss of concentration during physical activity or while eating running and jumping by the kids and at this is the particular age when they start to explore plastic or metal, metallic objects by putting them in the mouth and then they are more prone for uh, aspiration and uh, and anatomically relatively the larynx and epiglottis is highly positioned and they will have narrow airways and uh, also due to incomplete development of airway protective reflexes as well as they have immature swallowing coordinations and last but the most dangerous thing inadequate chewing process all these factors emo- uh, uh, make tracheobronchial uh, foreign body aspiration as an emergency situation with serious life threatening complication frequently uh, in children is one of the most common emergency procedures undertaken in pediatric population so and uh, the presentation is usually variable and it will depend on the uh, uh, time of presentation of the kid into the er sir it might be early or late early being it can be because of uh, severe acute upper airway obstruction late as in signs of uh, secondary uh, lower respiratory infection and also depends on the size and shape of the object inhaled and the site of the object in the airway if it's more proximal it will lead to complete airway obstruction asphyxiation or to the worst case scenario even death whereas if it's distally embedded it will be more subtle presentation and it can be even later stages even after a few minutes to few months or days or months even together and uh, again as a time of presentation since the event why because the organic contents usually they lead to secondary chemical or inflammatory reactions uh, occur surrounding the foreign body which will lead to post obstruction infection leading to more other uh, complications the parent come or as pneumonia atelectasis and other presentations sir so the clinical signs of the uh, presentation uh, they usually say triad in usually 60% of the cases being cough wheezing and decreased breath sounds but the most uh, important factor would be choking sir but that would be a very acute presentation and it will be el- elapsed within a few seconds to minutes if not encountered no one would be able to trace back the history of uh, foreign body aspiration so choking usually has a sensitivity of 81% and a specificity of 33% and uh, l- later stages the kid may present with coughing dyspnea wheezing and uh, rarely stridor and cyanosis and uh, if uh, if the presentation is very bad or the obstruction is very uh, dreadful the kid may be seen with uh, severe intercostal or uh, sternal recession and uh, reduced conscious level and other major sign would be reduced breath sounds on the side of the obstruction sir And, and the major problems encountered in the foreign body aspiration is we have to maintain a patent airway and we need to avoid a complete airway obstruction and the anesthetist should have good uh, capability so as to induce and as well as maintain a satisfactory anesthesia for the procedure and uh, there will be high risk of uh, hypoxemia during uh, because it will be a shared airway by the surgeon as well as by the anesthetist and to prevent and management of the possible post op airway problems sir so the key goal of anesthesia what they state is usually to keep the child breathing spontaneously till the last moment as possible and uh, to prevent post op pressure ventilation since it may push the foreign body further down the airway which is an hypothetical uh, question uh, scenario sir some say it, it won't be that uh, severe and uh, later when we discuss about the phases of aspiration it can be immediate asymptomatic second phase or renewal uh, symptomatic phase whereas in the first one when there will be an immediate presentation the kid will present with choking gagging coughing wheezing and stridor and in an asymptomatic second phase which will be prolonged just a few minutes to few and it can go up to few months after the first phase it will depend on the location degree of obstruction and the type of foreign body being uh, embedded 
whereas in the renewed symptomatic phase there will be airway infection and inflammation because of the organic uh, compound and the surrounding changes taking place around the foreign body which will lead to uh, repeated coughing bouts and there will be production of sputum wheezing fever and even hemoptysis in some situations and uh, next as we see it uh, proper history collection would be more essential sir and uh, as far as the probability of the foreign body getting embedded the right bronchus is the most commonest place to get uh, embedded followed by the right lobar bronchi left bronchi then by the trachea carina larynx and it will be very rarely bilateral uh, location a diagnosis <clears throat> majority uh, uh, majority of the objects are not radio opaque so being inorganic so during the early stages inorganic will not be much clearly seen sir so x-ray can be normal or later stages it because of the changes occurring there might be pulmonary infections or inflammatory infiltrations happening and there can also be mediastinal shifts obstructive emphysema uh, ipsilateral lateral ectasis or uh, air trapping and uh, if at all there is a sharp object being uh, inhaled and uh, if there is uh, penetration injury it can be presented as <clears throat> pneumothorax and pneumomediastinum and uh, low bore collapse as well as it might lead to contralateral hyperinflation or air trapping sir so generally in air, upper airway obstruction the x-ray can be normal whereas in distal airway obstruction the x-ray can be presented as emphysematous and infiltration will be seen so to and again the specificity and the sensitivity of chest x-ray its uh, sensitivity is around 67 to 82 percent whereas the specificity is 44 to 74 percent just to enhance the uh, sensitivity of the x-ray uh, fluoroscopy if time is being permitted can be done and uh, if possible during inspiration as well as in expiration and the management strategy would be uh, immediate BLS if uh, and uh, there's one called a choking child BLS algorithm sir so there are two questions in it first one is does the child have effective cough it means does the child is crying talking or can it take a breath between coughs or is it uh, not cyanosed and uh, this kid has to be continuously observed if any of the danger signs occur should be immediately intervened and if the cough is not effective is the child conscious if the child is conscious they say to give uh, back thrust and uh, chest thrust back blows and chest thrust five in each and if not then we'll assess uh, airway breathing circulation and subsequent management would be the gold standard thing of going into rigid bronchoscope to retrieve the foreign body and the technique of anesthesia uh, as we start we'll start to prepare the case sir so the first thing should be to uh, ask about the fasting status of the kid and uh, as guideline says for solids it should be six hours and for clear fluids it should be two hours and pre-medication usually for this foreign body aspiration sedative pre-medication is not usually advised you know because this sedation, sedation would suppress the respiratory drive and uh, they usually are they have given uh, notes of giving steroids or dexamethasone at uh, 0.4 to 1 mg per kg to treat the inflammation and prevent the likelihood of airway edema incurred by the bronchoscopy itself and induction there are two three modes sir it can be either iv or uh, inhalational uh, iv usually and uh, yeah, one of the uh, studies showed that rsi with gentle cricoid pressure would be the better technique to be followed and uh, to secure iv line with the application of embla cream and propofol would be the choice of medicine here since it would be stable in a reactive airway too and uh, they say to avoid muscle relaxant uh, till the foreign body is uh, localized whereas an inhalational induction which is less preferred and uh, it uh, it can be used only in when the foreign body is uh, highly placed and the sevoflurane would be the best choice because it is it has a faster induction and it will be less irritable to the airway and the topical spray with the 10 percent of uh, locks up to a 4 ml uh, 4 mg per kg can be used to reduce the cough on uh, laryngoscopy and uh, next method would be alternatively with uh, fentanyl and uh, propofol sir they say that fentanyl at 0.5 micrograms per kg to be given IV stand followed by incremental boluses of propofol at 1 mg per kg then increments of 0.5 mg per kg till the baby loses the consciousness or to start dexmed at 1 mg per kg and uh, ketamine can be given as IM or if in the uh, dreadful scenarios when IV access cannot be uh, done as an IM or else uh, in a hypotensive patient 
So generally proceeded with anticholinergic atropine at uh, 0 0.01 mg per kg or glycopolate at 0 0.02 mg per kg. And uh, humidifying oxygenation would be the main goal which has to be provided throughout the process. And antibiotics to uh, prevent the further complication or the parenchymal uh, affection of the foreign body. And anti-aspiration prophylaxis with the metoclopramide at uh, 0.15 mg per kg IV and uh, ranitidine at uh, 1 mg per kg IV, sir. So, and once the adequate depth is achieved, <clears throat> the cords and upper tracheo are sprayed under the aerial laryngoscopy as I before with locks to reduce the cardiovascular as well as the fusive response to the bronchoscopy. And uh, nitrous oxide should be uh, should not be used if there are signs of gas trapping. And uh, again, the controversy in this scenario is if the plane of anesthesia is not adequate or that when the kid is in a lighter plane of anesthesia, bronchoscopy itself can, can induce arrhythmia and spasms. So proper care should be taken to maintain a deep plane of anesthesia too. And uh, once a bronchoscope passes the glottis, uh, anesthesia circuit should be immediately connected to the side port to give supplemental O2. And here the ETCO2 won't be of much help because most of the gases would escape out of the side arm and uh, some say that the use of jet ventilation during bronchoscopy in non obstructed lung would prevent the hypoxemia so jet ventilation at uh, 10 to 20 kilopascals with a bent 18 gauze needle and one theory says uh, use of succinylcholine with atropine sir 50 mg of succinylcholine mixed with 0 0.3 mg of atropine taken up diluted in a 5 ml syringe and to be given in an uh, incremental doses of 10 mg once the kid comes out of succinylcholine and whereas in other theory says uh, usage of uh, propofol with remifentanil propofol uh, to be induced i mean uh, used at uh, 250 mics per kg per minute given iv followed by remifentanil at 0.2 mics per kg per minute and here dexamethasone again at the dose of 0.4 to 1 mg can be used to prevent the airway swelling and uh, the modes of ventilation it can be spontaneous controlled or jet ventilation sir in spontaneous, the advantages would be there would be reduced risk of foreign body dislodgement and uh, continuous ventilation during bronchoscopy can be achieved and the depth of anesthesia can be ha highlighted or increased by increasing the uh, flow of volatile uh, anesthetic concentration and rapid airway assessment is possible once the foreign body is removed. Where the disadvantages are, it requires a deeper pl planes at uh, times of scopy, may cause hypoventilation or arrhythmias and it would require assistance. Wherein there will be two anesthetists to be present, uh, two ex experts should be present during the bronchoscopy technique, one being a pediatric surgeon himself. And uh, pediatric, anesthetist. pediatric anesthetist and the ENT surgeon. Yes, sorry, sir. And then control ventilation advantages are uh, airway can be immobilized, there will be good exposure, less volatile uh, anesthetic dose is only required, and it, it has reduced atelectasis and better oxygenation. Whereas the disadvantages might be due to the difficulty if not airtight and it may be impossible during suctioning and instrumentation and it may dislodge the foreign body distally. So some the and jet, jet ventilation it might cause barotrauma and it might dislodge the foreign body distally. And the most commonest time for the serious complication to occur would be during the retrieval of the foreign body sir because the foreign body may become snagged and dislodged at the cords or the larynx and it might co it might lead to complete airway obstruction. And already due to the underlying bronchial edema on the affected side, foreign body may get dislodged or fall into the good part of the lung and thus compromise the gas exchange too. And if the foreign body is dislodged into the trachea, it needs to be retrieved rapidly. If not, desaturation would occur more rap faster. And if in this scenario, you, we might ask the surgeon to push the foreign body to one of the bronchus to allow gases exchange. And occasionally, an emergency tracheostomy may be required, and the preparation should be done for this before the start of the case, sir. And the yes. periodic, perioperative complications of uh, foreign body removal, first being in airway, it might lead to a laryngeal edema, secondary to foreign body itself, as well as to the instrumentation with bronchoscopy. And there might be complete airway obstruction, again, secondary to dislodge foreign body during cuff or removal. And there might be even failure to remove the object. And uh, yeah, in this scenario, when uh, uh, and next is the breathing, in whereby we can we might encounter hypoxia and hypercarbia. In this scenario, the uh, surgeon might be asked to retrieve the bronchoscope to the level of mid trachea and provide adequate ventilation for the saturation to increase. 
and uh, the patient might present with coughing, pneumothorax, pneumonia, and regurgitation and aspiration of the gastric contents too. And whereas in circulation, it might lead to cardiac dysarrhythmias and cardiac arrest. Neurological, the kid may present with seizures, secondary to hypoxia or hypercarbia. And others, uh, being present as lung abscess, tracheal laceration, bronchiectasis, bronchospasm, iatrogenic tracheoesophageal fistula, might be because of the penetrating injury of the foreign body as well as during instrumentation and irreversible pulmonary changes and worst case scenario, death, sir. Excellent. Very good. Nice. Uh, presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, only thing here is uh, pre-operatively, you have to have a good communication with the surgeon, anesthetist, the OT staff, everybody. There should be a consultation and uh, proper communication to uh, so, uh, understand the emergent nature of the procedure. Uh, so everybody should be aware and each one has a role. Yes. And uh, as you said, uh, it's always mandatory two anesthetists should be there. One of them should be a trained pediatric anesthetist. And uh, even among the surgeon, the senior most and experienced surgeon should do this procedure most of the time because uh, it can be life and death situation if uh, done by a learning surgeon or a novice. Uh, it can be more problematic and result in more complications rather than any relief. So the main point we have to understand is uh, if it is a complete obstruction at the level of the larynx or trachea by the foreign body, Majority of the children will die instantaneously because of the total obstruction and hypoxia. Uh, what is the common response of hypoxia in children with the cardiovascular system? Bradycardia. 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 So that's why they will go for arrest much earlier compared to adults. Whereas in adults, hypoxia usually stimulates the cardiovascular system because of the Incomplete development of the sympathetic response, they have a predominant vagal tone. So, children less than three years usually develop bradycardia faster than tachycardia in the presence of hypoxemia. So, the arrest will happen much earlier. So, if a child is reaching the hospital emergency after a history suggestive of a foreign body inhalation, then the uh, that means it's only a partial obstruction. It is not yes, a sir. total obstruction. But uh, again, the partial obstruction, you have to rule out whether it is, I mean, identify whether it is in the upper major airway or in the lower smaller airways. If it is in the smaller airways, it will usually not be very serious. It will look like a, a patient may sometimes may not even come to the hospital, but later, after two days or three days, the uh, child will be brought also. It has got a picture of pneumonia because of the large part in body creating a lot of inflammation and uh, an pneumonic picture with cough, fever, and uh, drowsiness, I mean, uh, inability to eat, uh, producing a lot of uh, um, secretions from the tracheobronchial tree. That will be the picture. Whereas uh, the upper airway lodgement, partially blocking the trachea or the major bronchi, child will come with strider or drawing and uh, hypoxemia, cyanosis, all these varying degrees of presentation can be there. So the uh, aim is to remove the foreign body if it is life-threatening as quickly as possible to prevent further deterioration. So for that you have to have these changes. So the main I, uh, management uh, uh, dilemma is whether to preserve the spontaneous respiration and uh, maintain anesthesia as inhalation agents or to go for regular conventional intravenous induction and paralysis and take over the ventilation. So this point will be mainly uh, discussed by uh, any major airway uh, foreign body like trachea or the main bronchi, it is always better to preserve the spontaneous respiration to prevent further dislodgement and uh, uh, of the foreign body. But if it is in the peripheral area like the lower bronchi <coughs> or a smaller airway, then uh, you can safely do control ventilation because 
the size of the foreign body will not allow it to travel further down whereas in the uh, major airway it can get shifted so that is the reason why you prefer to maintain spontaneous ventilation until the foreign body is located by the endoscopist and then when they catch hold of that and they are ready to remove it then you can paralyze to minimize the vocal cord movement and other things and remove it with in toto along with the endoscope so until then it is better to preserve the spontaneous ventilation so that's why i think uh, did you prepare it from the weekly tutorial by the wfsa uh, yes sir i referred to the article sir okay right so i'll just show a presentation you have mentioned most of the points very well i'll just go for a presentation yes sir uh, <clears throat> It visible now? Yes, sir. It's here for a table of. Uh, <clears throat> so, a two-year-old male child weighing 18 kg brought with uh, sudden onset of shortness of breath, coughing, and restlessness. This may be the history. This sort of case scenario, they can give it in the theory question paper also, as well as in the viva. They can give the scenario and ask you to discuss about that. So the child was apparently normal before he was playing with his older siblings eating peanuts he developed a spider initially and later developed these symptoms and rushed to the hospital on examination child was distressed crying coughing intermittently but had no spider now over respiratory rate was 40 breaths per minute some intercostal and uh, sternal resuscitation was there Auscultation revealed a mild wheeze on the right side of the chest. Saturation was 94% on room air. Immediately, an AP of the chest was done. There was no pneumothorax, collapse, or consolidation. Age group: Which age group of children run the risk of foreign body aspiration, and why? That question was answered in the presentation. Foreign body is commonly occurs in one to three years of old age group. tending to occur more in boys rather than girls and children of this they are more prone to aspiration because they put their objects in their mouth especially while running and during that moment they tend to aspirate and they have no molar teeth to grind or chew that is another reason why these objects can easily go and uh, what are the ways the aspiration can present it can present as a complete obstruction or a partial obstruction in complete obstruction it will be life threatening i have put it in blue because patient will immediately become totally cyanosed and have an arrest whereas partial obstruction there will be some oxygenation still present so more deaths occur at the time of aspiration due to complete upper airway obstruction children who reach hospital alive have only partial obstruction that is the victim that you should know so what are the locations where the foreign body can be lodged in the airway and by what objects so that was uh, mentioned there it can get lodged in larynx trachea or one of the major bronchi it can be solid metals like coin button cells safety pins or it can be organic items like peanuts why diagnosis of foreign body aspiration is difficult the reason is frequently inhalation is even is not witnessed a group of children playing and suddenly one child getting into this problem uh, parents are not there to witness what is exactly happening and history may be less clear and the children themselves they are not able to say what happened so they are pre verbal and uh, presentation is variable sometimes it may be very acute and serious sometimes it may be very mild so early versus late presentation size and shape of the object taken or inhaled aspirated height of the object and time of presentation all these things are uh, points which make difficulty in diagnosing for in body aspiration now i am showing <coughs> this picture <coughs> can you tell me where exactly this foreign body is located upper airway sir in the trachea upper airway in the trachea 
cricopharynx cricopharyngeal since that is the narrowest since that is a narrowest part hmm any other answers now watch uh, this lateral picture is very very uh, important more than the ap view this lateral picture what do you see what is this are you able to see this one where my pointer is going yes sir what is that this is a tracheal yes. shadow tracheal arch so it's in the esophagus ah. sir so this is the foreign body in the esophagus esophagus yes sir this is the foreign body in the tracheal this lateral picture this is the air shadow in the trachea and foreign body is in the center there yes, is here the air shadow is in front of the foreign body so the picture identify the x-rays where foreign body is in the esophagus and one in the trachea this is the foreign body in the esophagus so in what way it will differ the clinical presentation in this case when it is aspirated into the esophagus and lodged like this here what will be the presentation dysphagia sir dysphagia drooling not drooling follow and... but respiratory yes. signs will be normal okay normal. there will be no cyanosis no tachypnea so child will uh, be incessantly crying and distressed but it will not have any difficulty in respiration okay so that's the important thing that we will be able to understand and these are the common locations where the larynx is uh, present at trachea as 5 to 15% left main bronchus 30 to 35 main area right main bronchus somehow it goes there even though children have equal angulation for some reason right main bronchus for in body is more common than the uh, other locations and here you are seeing a uh, ap view where there is a for in body in the right main bronchus so the for in body is seen in the right main bronchus so there is an atelectasis or collapse predominantly affecting the right lower lobe because it is in the uh, distinct from the right heart border film can easily see that and this is the lateral view where you can see again the air shadow is seen and you see the foreign body in the middle of the air shadow and patchy opacity this is the patchy opacity that you see so this, this has been marked out so the lower lobe has collapsed here and the, what are the differences between early and late presentation it may be in the form of acute airway obstruction from a pink child to child with reduced oxygenation whereas in the late it is mainly considered as a lower respiratory tract infection with fever cough and all the things so severe upper airway can present as cyanosis rider severe intercostal drawing or uh, reduced level of consciousness depending upon the degree of obstruction and hypoxemia and history of barking cough may be there in laryngeal edema and upper airway obstruction is a foreign body lodged near the larynx whereas lower airway obstruction it again presents as pneumonia as i said differential diagnosis what are the differential mm-hmm. diagnosis for foreign body aspiration asthma pneumonia bronchiolitis Yes. Pneumothorax, crew, and other infective disorders. Yes, so sir. That's the thing which I want to. So late presentations, we'll have to think of all these other DDs. What investigations are done normally? We take a AP view and lateral. So that's that's that AP view test should include the neck also. So we must insist that it should enter the film should extend to the entire neck. And can plain X-ray detect the foreign body all the time? No. no majority of the time they are not opaque so they are or- organic in nature so it may not be visible in the x-ray but other uh, features like uh, uh, the other damages like air trapping hemothorax collapse all those things can be made out the way to improve the diagnosis if time is permissible you can go for fluoroscopy and uh, inspiration expiration pictures and uh, evidence of the has trapping may be seen in such conditions but only when the child is stable uh, the various radiological findings sometimes most of the time it will be a normal x-ray 
no abnormality will be seen sometimes you will find the gas trapping because of the so called ball valve effect of the foreign body there may can be a mediastinal shift if there is a pneumothorax or it can have an atelic cases lobar collapse or consolidation now how does this ball valve effect come if the foreign body is lodged in the center of the airway then gases can still go through both sides this is called the by by valve uh, bypass valve where partial obstruction is there or it can be what is called the check valve type where there is because inspiration is a, a forceful active effort air is able to go in but because of the edema it is not able to exhale because uh, expiration is a passive act so what happens air gets uh, trapped inside egress is stopped so it becomes obstructive emphysematous type whereas another type is the stop valve both entry as well as exit are uh, blocked because of the edema in the foreign body so there is atelectasis or collapse will happen so if it is a, a partial block allowing only inhalation and but not exhalation emphysema will develop if it is a total obstruction preventing both inhalation and exhalation you will have a collapse or atelectasis so this is the algorithm which is given in some uh, book foreign body aspiration suspected or witnessed signs of complete airway obstruction which are inability to speak cry or cough inaudible breath sounds paradoxical chest and abdomen movement loss of consciousness or cyanosis all these things indicate complete airway obstruction if that is present yes then make a diagnosis of complete airway obstruction see whether the child is responsive or not If the patient is not responsive immediately start cpr chest compression which may dislodge foreign body or go for emergency airway if the child is responsive then go for back blows failure to dislodge then depending upon the age you go for chest thrust or abdominal thrust this is called the hemlich maneuver older children you can do uh, hemlich Whereas in smaller infants, you go for what is called chest thrust. Uh, but if it is a partial obstruction, then whether it is signs of upper airway or lower airway, that is a distinction that you have to make. In upper airway, usually you will have spider, sternal retraction, accessory muscles will be acting, and difficulty swallowing and drooling will be there. Lower airway mainly cough, absent breath sounds, and wheezing, and uh, X-ray neck. foreign body detected uh, x-ray chest whether any foreign body detected and uh, if it is there you can see a foreign body see whether you can do a laryngoscopy or nasal endoscopy to remove it if it is situated very close to the upper airway or encourage coughing when the child is conscious and dislodge can remove or plan for removal with a nasal endoscope Whereas if it is a lower airway, it is signs foreign body detected. Again, you can encourage the child to cough and dislodge it, or go for CT chest or bronchoscopy and plan for a removal. This you can do a little leisurely. Lower airway obstruction, you have some more time to do that. Whereas in the upper airway obstruction, it is more or less quasi emergency. You have to do it as early as possible. now the management strategy is what uh, has already been described as a choking child uh, life algorithm so ent and anesthetist ent surgeon anesthetist should be readily available first to look into the mouth and throat and see whether any foreign body is visible which can be removed by metal forceps and if the patient is conscious then go for back blows chest thrust and uh, if not if unconscious go for uh this is station this is the advanced pediatric life support choking child algorithm first assess whether there is any cough no cough whether the child is conscious or not if conscious back blows and chest press if not conscious open airway go for cpr if the effective cough is there encourage coughing and support the access
Now this is how the back blows are given in a small child. Put the child on the lap with the head down position and then with the open palm tap the back between the, uh, the capillae. So that's how you do the back flow. And this is the uh, hemlic maneuver or the abdominal thrust which you do. So the idea is to put your hands together and uh, press the diaphragm towards the larynx. So you have to give a jerk above so that you can uh, increase the airway pressure and make the child expel the uh, content. Then subsequent management, most children who reach hospital with an inhaled foreign body will have an effective cough. Once the child has been assessed, you must have appropriately skilled senior personnel for bronchoscopy under general anesthesia, which is a very important thing. And gold standard is to use the rigid open tube bronchoscope, uh, whereas some centers use flexible bronchoscope also using the tools like the retral basketing forceps and uh, baskets. Now, uh, why rigid bronchoscope is still preferred over the flexible bronchoscope? Any idea, any reasons? It will have an, it will accommodate a visual uh, retracting force of the nature. Mm. So it will be easy to capture the foreign body and retrieve it back. Whereas yes. flexible bronchoscope can be just for aspiration of the contents in the bronchial lavage kind of things. Very good, yes. So the widespread availability of foreign body removing equipment which fits into the lumen of the rigid bronchoscope is the main one main reason for using rigid bronchoscope. You have a lot of instruments which can go into that. So if you see the array of instruments that you have, this is the forceps which you use to retrieve the foreign body. So like that, you, uh, we have various sizes and various uh, lengths of uh, retrieving forceps are available, which can go into the bronchoscope like this. And this is the rigid laryngoscope, which also can be sometimes used. So that is one main reason. Second reason is more many the surgeons are familiar with rigid bronchoscopy. And uh, uh, you can deliver oxygen and anesthetic gases through a rigid bronchoscope, which is not possible when you use a flexible uh, bronchoscope. So here you can see this is the rigid bronchoscope. This is already the retrieving forces is introduced into that. The surgeon is seeing through the eyepiece and you can see the anesthetic agent or the oxygen delivery system is attached to the side arm of the scope. And uh, so that is the advantage of using the rigid bronchoscope. What are the prerequisites for a successful ret retrieval? The main thing is communication between all medical staff with regard to planning and equipment. The anesthetist should be familiar with uh, the contingency plans. What are all the alternate that you are going to do, supposing it is not uh, retrieved. And you must check the bronchoscope and its connection to the breathing system should be checked. And the uh, experienced senior staff should perform the procedure, and two anesthetists should be present, one of whom should be a pediatric anesthetist. So, these are all the requirements or the requisites. Coming to the technique, what preparations are needed? Fasting, depending upon the clinical state of the child, children are often transferred to the theater without full ideal fasting. So, if it is a more of an obstruction with the patient gradually going in for hypoxemia, you cannot wait for the child to have that adequate fasting time. So you have to treat them as full stomach. Pre-medication, you have to avoid all sedative pre-medications. Anticholinergics may be given, especially if uh, there are anesthetists who still prefer halothane to theofluorin because of the smooth induction and prolonged uh, anesthesia at time, but the vagal induced bradycardia can be problematic. And uh, coming to medical therapy, antibiotics are given to prevent any <coughs> features like pneumonia and steroids are given to prevent the edema. And intravenous access is a must and the use of emular cream will help rather than going in for any inhalation induction and attempting to get the IV access. The anesthesia, how is it induced and maintained? 
you can use inhalation induction with sevoflurane or halothane in some centers to maintain spontaneous ventilation. Whereas uh, free oxygenate and anesthetic agent with the oxygen mixture is the ideal one so that you can give 100% oxygen, nitrous oxide to be avoided so that uh, the gas trapping will not increase. And also nitrous oxide is more emetic. So patients will have vomiting post-operatively. For these two reasons, you can avoid nitrous oxide. And once you achieve the adequate uh, depth of uh, CCI by inhalation route, like eye signs and respiratory pattern, abdominal wall tone, uh, the cords and upper trachea can be sprayed under direct laryngoscopy with 4 mg per kg of lignocaine. This reduces the cardiovascular and passive response. The child will not cough during the introduction of bronchoscope. Then coming to maintenance of anesthesia, this is quite challenging, especially in the presence of reduced gas exchange in many of the children. So spontaneously breathing technique is superior as it reduces the chance of distal movement or dislodgement of the foreign body, especially if they are in the upper airway and may less likely to worsen distal air traffic. This is the advantage of spontaneous breathing. ISTP with the maple sniff is connected to the side arm of the bronchoscope, allowing volatile anesthetic. So this is how the ISTP is connected to the bronchoscope. This is another method of connecting it. What is, which one would you prefer between these two? Both are ISTPs attached to the bronchoscope. Which one do you think is advantageous? Dr. Tilak, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can't make out any difference between two, sir. You cannot make out any difference. Okay. What is this? Is this part of ISTP? Ah, okay, okay. That is that is more flexible, sir. Ah, so this so is what is, what is corrugated this tube? tube. Corrugated yeah. tube, sir. Yeah, this is a corrugative connector which is attached to that. Whereas here it is directly attached to the side arm. So yes, what sir. is the disadvantage in using this extension? So, yeah. Dead space is increased. The dead space. Dead no? space, yes, sir. The idea of uh, TPC is dead space True. is very minimal because yes, the sir. point of entry is a, a location where dead space apparatus, dead space ends. So, in this, it is very, very negligible. Whereas in this sort of connection, you have extra dead space, apparatus dead space is there. And of course, this is the uh, um, anujet. Anujet connections are there. So you can directly have a six feet pressure force, pressure guard, a control uh, switch, on off switch, and there is a tubing to which you can attach a needle and introduce it to the side arm of the uh, bronchoscope. So another reason for spontaneous ventilation is when the bronchoscope is passed more distally, oxygen and volatile is delivered to a smaller portion of the lung. So in a spontaneously breathing child, oxygen enriched gas is entrained from the around the bronchoscope. So oxygenation will improve. That is the idea of uh, preserving the spontaneous respiration. There is an alternative method is to paralyze the patient and use positive pressure ventilation. This technique is comparatively superior to spontaneous ventilation because the number of and severity of coughing will be very much reduced and desaturation episodes are also very much less because you are uh, giving positive pressure ventilation. And this reduces the atelectasis also and overcomes the resistance to breathing through the bronchoscope. So in a spontaneously breathing child, it has to breathe through the bronchoscope. So that resistance will be added. And there is a risk of foreign body dislodgement with positive pressure ventilation, but it may get stuck in the smaller airway from which retrieval may be easy. So in that way, some people prefer to give control ventilation only. Spontaneous ventilation is more reliable with addition of intravenous anesthetic dose and small doses of OPH for foreign body removal in the major and trachea or major bronchi. Whereas uh, control ventilation for a lower airway retriever. 
three operative complications you can divide it into a b c as we described it can be laryngeal edema or it can be a complete airway obstruction or it can be a failure to remove the object b it can be hypoxia hypercarbia coughing regurgitation pneumothorax and pneumonia and c it can be cardiac dysrhythmias or cardiac arrest and neurological it can be seizures and others it can be death and of course injury due to the bronchoscope as mentioned uh, fistula puncture and all those things and foreign body may become snagged and dislodged at the cord level sometimes it can cause from partial to complete obstruction and the uh, edema on the affected site may cause or uh, make the uh, object fall into the normal lung compromising gas exchange and it can get uh, lodged in the trachea which may need a immediate retrieval or a open uh, uh, front of neck access or sometimes it can be pushed down to low exchange emergency tracheostomy may be needed post op care you have to perform an x ray to exclude the complications not to see whether the body body has been removed sometimes the pneumothorax or emphysematous changes can happen the consequences of delayed treatment may be treated as pneumonia and if children are clinically well they can be discharged on the same day Now some of the true or false questions to understand. I mean, find out what is your understanding. Uh, most aspirated foreign bodies will be large in one of the main bronchi. True or false? True, true, sir. True. Nine percent of the male foreign bodies are large in one of the bronchi, and even in children, most two fifty percent will be on the right side, even though they are branching at the same angle. Anesthesia must be delayed and the child until the child is adequately fasted. True or false? False. False, sir. False depends on the clinical Emergency scenario. Emergency with sir. respiratory compromise, especially the case scenario which we have given, it is a quasi emergency, so we should not wait. Most aspirated foreign bodies in children will be visible on plain X-ray film. True or false? False. 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 Most aspirated will not be seen. child may need a chest operation to help the diagnosis true or false if, if possible true sir yeah if we can wait till the but uh, in, in emergency it is false you should not wait for that uh, x ray for the patient although inspiratory expiratory films and fluoroscopy may help the diagnosis if the child is suffering from respiratory distress you should not wait Anesthesia for rigid bronchoscopic removal of foreign body is urgently indicated in this child. Yes, sir. The true. Case in the case. Yes, we have. True, since the child is in distress and saturation is decreasing. Steroids may be given to prevent inflammation of the airway. True or true. false? True, sir. Although very little evidence is there, we have to give. The sedating pre-medication like oral metazolam can be prescribed. To reduce anxiety. Mm. False, sir. False. Although premedication may be considered, other techniques such as parenteral presence is often useful. A sedating premedication should be avoided as much as possible. IV atropine may be considered to prevent halothane-induced bradycardia. True, sir. True. Yes, if you are planning to use halothane, better to give IV atropine. Inhalation anesthesia with oxygen, nitrous oxide, and either halothane or thiofluorine is the induction agent of choice. Uh, true, sir. Provided that there are no gas trapping for the utilization of nitrous oxide. Hmm. Better to avoid nitrous oxide. So nitrous oxide okay, should sir. be avoided to avoid any gas trapping. And allow better. Uh, you can give hundred percent oxygen if you are not using nitrous oxide. Okay, that is the advantage to the thiofluorine. High ml of four uh, percent lignocaine spray to the vocal cords would be suitable for local anesthetic operation before rigid bronchoscopy. True or false? True, sir. True. All of you agree? Ammo, are you there? Yes, sir. You agree for that? Doctor Tilak says it is true. 
five ml of four percent lignocaine can be sprayed to the vocal cords. It's a four inch per kg. Five ml, twenty ml. Twenty kg, two hundred milligram. So wait, okay, what's sir. the weight of the ah, child? Right. Yeah, eighteen kg. Yes, yeah, sir. Sorry, 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 sir. Recommended dose approximately is only four. Four ml. So child is only eighteen kg. Eighteen into four is seventy two milligram. So yes. if you five ml, it will be grossly increasing the dose and. That too, our mucous membrane absorption will be as rapid as a blotting paper or ink. So you will end up with silicone toxicity. Last. So, yeah. So you can you should use only maximum seventy two mg in this patient. Two less than two ml. Yes, sir. Less than two ml only. The child develops complete airway obstruction in the emergency department. The child should be immediately anesthetized for bronchoscopic foreign body removal. True or false? True, sir. True. Complete airway obstruction to the base basic yeah. support. Be less. Child algorithm. Be less first, first. Ah, and then sorry. yes. Ah. So airway is secure and safe once the rigid bronchoscope has passed through the vocal cords. Ah, true, sir. Not at all. Yeah, well, the foreign secure. body may be dropped when Not passing. passing. Not yeah. secure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, right. So these are all the things that I wanted to show you. So one small, so one small thing. So after uh, removal of the foreign body, sometimes we intubate the patient to make yes. sure that everything is okay before we, uh, um, uh, um, I mean, like um, get the child out. Sometimes. Yeah, if you, if you this, especially in uh, edema at the laryngeal level. Yeah, he mentioned he mentioned about like this uh, this about the thing, but he did not mention that. We might have to intubate, intubate. the child yes, after sir. removal of the foreign body. Sometimes. Sometimes, yes. So yes, I mean, they, they are suspecting the atelectasis. Be there because of the edema. So until then, better to keep the child in the Okay. Sir, sir, just to one add an historical point, sir. Gusto Kili. Killian in 1897 was the first to use rigid bronchoscopy to remove a foreign body from right brain bronchus, sir. And flexible bronchoscope was just started in 1970s. This right. is a historical yes. point. Yeah. It is still, it's still more useful body. than um, yeah, rigid bronchoscopy is more useful for removal yes, of a foreign body. Uh, FOB is only for diagnosis. You can't remove anything with it. Yes, yeah, so it, it's used only to aspect. Uh, yeah. Mainly content, aspiration. Fluid content. Uh, some they say they yeah. are using in this uh, tie dam for. Uh, Using the urethral basketing for very very small uh, beads like things and other things from the distal airway. Not distal airway, yes, yes, sir. Yes, so that can be done, but that is in older children, but not in very young children or infants like this. Can I ask one uh, other related scenario, sir? The foreign body is in the upper airway, like in the nasopharynx, and the surgeon wants to pluck it out. What should be the safest approach to protect the airway before any instrumentation in the upper airway? Intubation. Intubation. You simply have Always to intubate secure the Always the airway with an endotracheal tube. Nasopharynx means it will have to be pushed either to the pharynx and then retrieved or it can, uh, if it is stuck, especially if you try to remove, it can uh, bleed uh, horribly. So it intubation is better to intubate and then keep the airway sealed and then allow the surgeon to remove it. Sometimes, you know, they put the chalk piece or the small uh, beads into the nose while playing. I have seen one kid uh, putting a button cell into the nose and it got lodged in the, the nasopharynx. And the child was uh, did not tell the mother. Uh, after two, three days, it started having a purulent discharge. And it could not breathe through that nose and uh, was struggling in the night. Then only they identified that it has put it in and it was removed uh, under anesthesia only. So what the surgeon Whenever did, was, uh, he pushed it into the pharynx, then did a scopy and then uh, plucked it with a, pulled it out with the medical process. Uh, whenever a child has a unilateral purulent nasal discharge, always suspect a foreign body. That is a dictum in pediatrics. If there's a unilateral nasal discharge, always suspect a foreign body. And suspect more than one foreign body at any particular time. Invariably, uh, the, nobody watches when the foreign body is going in. Nobody's looking. And nobody will miss uh, 
a battery or a, a peanut or anything like nobody knows how many peanuts they eat or whatever so invariably they might be more than one or two if it is upper area all this is upper area this is a question what for you come actually what you ask what you ask if it is the upper area right nasopharynx or uh, nose or uh, oropharynx it is you might suspect to have more than one foreign body you must be very very careful about it yes madam thank you madam the surgeon would be very tempting for a newcomer anesthetist they will say it is just visible i will just take it out to the collision forceps and all that no need for any airway protection but never succumb to that uh, trap always protect the airway intubate secure your uh, larynx and trachea and even it may you may even need a throat pack and only allow the patient uh, surgeon to touch touch the patient and as madam said uh, unilateral block nose block and coronary discharge always suspect a foreign body and more than one foreign body always very very important point madam thank you madam sign off uh, sir can you please comment on uh, supraglottic airway devices sir for this procedure yes sir no 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 i uh, supraglottic airway uh, how would you introduce your scope if uh, bronchoscope no if if at all it's in the upper airway sir as in the nasal oh, upper airway you can definitely use the supraglottic airway okay, because okay. that itself will protect anything going into the lung i mean uh, larynx yes sir so you can definitely place a, a nicely fitting supraglottic airway and then uh, retrieve it it's not a problem thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you prasi uh, madam and uh, thank you dear students sir can we sign off this meeting today sir yeah please thank you